Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're not done yet. XFC 47 is only getting started. A reminder that we have two titles on the line tonight. This next fight is a welterweight bout. It is Matt Natard versus Kevin Piras. Third bout today, ladies and gentlemen, watching from around the world at home, Matt Natard, Dirty Neff himself against Kevin Pierce. So Matt Natard coming in, trained out of the famed Boon Tube kickboxing Muay Thai gym uh, under John Wayne Parr, who I'm sure if you're a fight fan you've definitely heard of, probably watched plenty of his fights. And also in his corner, Daniel Almeida. Super high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and high level pro MMA fighter himself. Really, really strong corner. Absolutely crazy. I mean, ha imagine having a 10 time world Muay Thai champion in your corner. That alone would hype me up. And it's, I really, really like when I see the big kickboxing gyms make the move over to start producing MMA fighters, especially when they do the right thing and get a high level grappler to join their team. And coming an amateur record, two wins, one defeat. I'm very excited to see how Natard brings this together in his fourth amateur fight. Coming your way right now, Kevin Pudras. He's wearing a black belt of some description. A he goes, Taekwondo black belt. Taekwondo black belt. Very traditional to come out wearing them as well. Um, going by the fight name, uh, Toro Salcero. To hablo espanol muy malo, which Por means I speak <laughs> Spanish very bad, <laughs> <laughs> or right. something along those lines. I might have to get out Google Translate <laughs> to see what his fight name means. <laughs> Fighting out of MMA FFT under Janae, sorry, not under Janae, under Renato Sabotic. We've got Matt Natard, which is coming your way as a purple belt jiu-jitsu against, of course, uh, Kevin Paris being a white jiu-jitsu, but a black in Taekwondo. Introducing so. first in the blue corner, fighting out of Bunchu. <laughs> Matt Dirty Neff Natard. And his opponent in the red corner, fighting out of MMA FFT, Kevin El Toro Salzero Pires. And your referee in charge is Kevin Hickmott. Peter Hickmont, our referee. Really intriguing matchup, this one. Don't know a lot about Kevin, but I'm interested to see what he's bringing to the table today. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard of a Kevin, uh, Kevin Hickmont before as a referee, but straight into it, five seconds in. Straight down. And honestly, if someone was wearing a Taekwondo black belt to the cage, that would be my game plan as well. Mate, exactly. If you're skilled in that area, you want to excel in that area, yeah. you want to take that, make it your octagon. And that's exactly what Kevin's doing so early on. Looking like Kevin's got very good takedown defense, though, from what I can tell. In the right, right game plan, trying to get to one knee. Strong work from both guys so far. That's, he's using, yeah, he's. Looks like he's holding the cage there, but I think Peter saw him let go. I think the crowd yelled at him more than anyone there. 
But he is doing the right thing. He's not trying to play a jiu-jitsu game. He's trying to get back to his feet, which is a mistake a lot of debutantes do make. And there we go. Even landing damage while he's... Oh, he's found a Kimura grip in there as well. Kevin's... Might... This is... Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting here, because Natad's... Of course, his sole goal is just to keep him up against the cage, keep him down. He's got the contr full control of that, that right leg. Oh, he's giving him space to grab his neck here. He is full, he's trying to get the double underhook, so he just can't connect him. Oh, that's a good takedown, though. After some scrambling, he does get oh, he's, there. He's locked. Oh, he's got one arm in, one arm out. Sort of Kevin from the bottom here. Oh, he's going for the triangle here. I can see his arm. I don't think it's all the way out, but it's still a very, very tight grip Kevin has from the bottom here. So all, all Kevin needs to do right now, he needs to rotate around to the left. Put a bit of pressure, grab that leg. He's got his arm under the leg, so he's doing the right things here. But it doesn't look like it's he can get it in. What a transition off the cage, though. He goes for it. He's holding it tight. He's waiting for it. I, I, that elbow's only just out, so I think I think um, Matt might have enough space to... Oh, yeah, and he's, only, he's barely holding on with that foot behind his back as well. He's got to readjust go. his grips. He can't do it. Yeah. Oh, the ground and pound. Gets over into half guard. Really good high level match here. Insane skill from the purple belt in Jiu Jitsu. Matt Natard keeping the fight up against the cage. He's starting to get the back here. I, I'd re I'm really loving how technical both the tech. Both the grappling is both defensive and offensive grappling. Well, you've got a purple belt in Jiu-Jitsu. You've got a black belt in Taekwondo. They're going to be grabbing each other either way here. But Natar has so much power over that. He, he gets those hooks in, and he just doesn't let go. Ooh. So Kevin had a Kimura group at the end of that round. I think, I think Matt Natar won that round, but the things I saw from Kevin were very surprising, and I can... I can see that he, if he stays off the fence or attacks for submissions, I can see him having some success. This is another reminder but that you are not Natar, allowed. He's going to get some advice from Daniel Armada in the corner here, and he's going to know the things to adjust. Re well, once again, Brian Ebersole smashed the matchmaking twice. again. Really, really well matched fight. Yeah, Brian Ebersole, mate, we always praise him every XFC. We praise him because he brings it. He has so much fight knowledge. He has so much knowledge about who to put exactly against each other, and he does it so well. Our round one break, of course, brought to you by Havoc Clothing, sports gear and apparel company based in Brisbane, Australia, leading the way with original designs that express one's identity and culture. Our proud supporter of the XFC. Jab and a head kick to follow. Oh, there's a lot of power being thrown in. Oh, big nice. shots. He's pouring the Kevin. Is oh. oh, another knockdown. He's gone for an ankle lock. Harris applying so much pressure Kevin for us. All excitement all the time. But Natsad once again with that oh. jiu-jitsu skill. Oh, yeah. I'm tingling from that exchange. Oh. Oh, Paras, he was told he needs to come out firing. He can't risk this happening. And it, That is not the escape you want to be doing right now. He's only got one arm here, Natsad. He needs to land a second in. He's throwing a few punches He's here to get that grip. He's out the front. He needs to adjust here. He's got the triangle around the hips, very tight. Even though it holds him there, and it causes oh, breathing. Causes breathing to be very difficult. for that choke now. The thing about the body triangle is you can fight the choke, but you're still stuck in that same position over and over and over again. And I know you've had this happen to you as well, and that trying to breathe and contain an amount of oxygen in your lungs with that triangle, it makes it so difficult just compressing it's like an anaconda it just sucks it in every time you have a breath out it's like you can't get a full breath back in again 
But Paras needs to, he needs to roll over here and get the pressure on the ankle of uh, Natard. But uh, Natard, I don't know what he's doing right now. It looks like a tornado almost. A he body he actually stuff. has the right hip position. And I think he's about to turn into guard, which is very impressive with that. He has done it. Well done to Kevin Paras. Per wow, Paras. Amazing work to just... And he's throwing strikes from the top here. I think it's obvious from this point that Matt Natard is much more experienced with his grappling than with his striking. Natard needs to bring him closer here, or at least lock down one arm. You can't punch off the bottom. You need to get out of there because Peter Higmont's waiting to stop the fight because you're not improving your position. He's not doing too much damage, though. He's, he's, he's landing. He's landing undefended strikes, but he's not doing too much damage with it. It's the same concept if someone's in a crucifix and you're doing little five-inch punch, two-inch punches. If you throw 50 of them, they're still going to wave the fight off. And Tad's raising it. He's raising his legs here almost around the shoulder. He's a very high guard. I think Kevin Perus seems very aware of these positions, though. Very well conditioned, very aware, really big power in his hands. And is keeping up a ridiculous work rate towards yep. the end of the second round. I would love to see a strike count. I would Ooh. love to see a strike count. I would nearly say that that last exchange would send that to a 10-8 round. You reckon 10-8 for that one? Because Peter Hickman was there willing to stop the fight for nearly 30 seconds. I think there was a lot of striking done by both. Um, I, I would say easily, 100% easily, 10-9, past 10-9. Uh, it is whether the domination was enough for once sure, we got sure. it. Because the rear naked choke submission attempts were there. He had the submission attempts. He had a fair bit of back control, which in jiu-jitsu would land you four points straight away to grabbing the back. But it, it just depends. It's, I guess if that's why we're not IBJJF, judges. Jiu-jitsu, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't want to be a judge right now. I'm, I'm happy we're here with the microphone. I'm just so impressed with the level of these fights already, and we're so early on through the night. I mean... They say, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm watching UFC. What are you doing? We're watching XFC, and I'm enjoying this far more. Yeah. Peter Hickmont, so many years of experience as a referee, of course. Multiple, even decades, I believe, of referee experience. So him letting that fight play on, you can't even argue with it. You know, he knows what he's doing. And if, if he's not stopping it, there's a reason why. Mm. Oh, they are throwing now. Natard's looking a bit exhausted here. He was throwing. I think that's. I think he burned himself out trying to get the finish at the end of that last round. Like he's throwing his punches, but he's he's. And how much energy? Does Matt have to finish this takedown from here? He is right in front of us, has a single, tries to drag him off the fence, but just doesn't have that shoulder down far enough. No, we officially have the best seat in the house For right sure. now. Oh, Natard with another takedown. This is all going to be spirit from Kevin, for us from here. He's exhausted, he's stuck in a bad position, he needs to get back up to his feet. And for us, he's trying to get on his knees to get back to his feet, but by doing that, exposes his back. And it's hard, very experienced purple belt jujitsu here. He's trying to get the underhook. He's got the seatbelt grip in. He's trying to step over. If Pura Pura stands up to, here, it's hard to, to get... drag his back along the fence to scrape him off his back. But great work. He's on one knee, he needs to get to his feet here. He's in the right position to do it. Does he have the energy to do it though? And Natard landing once again, another seatbelt grip here. If Pira stands up and Natard holds onto that, Natard will be able to get his hooks in and it's gonna make weight very heavy on Paras's back. Oh, he's got the arm in tight. Oh, that is tight. And I don't think Paras has enough energy to escape from that if he he's squeezes. He's got it very tight. Oh, he he's doing well. Up. He changed arms. I can't see from here if he's got it under the chin. It's still under the chin, but it looks like it's not as tight as it was before. He's still trying to land it. Oh, okay, Ooh. that's tight. Paras has peeled his hands off again. Well done. The amount of heart in these two. Both. Oh, unbelievable. But here we go. Both hooks are now in.
If this round keeps going like this, this could also be a 10-8 round. It's too close to call once again. Dominating round in round two by Paras, and a dominating round by Natal in round three. First was pretty much even. It's these type of fights I really wish for five minute rounds. You get that, the grappling player to be able to stretch out their movements and secure the things they need to get for sure. I see what you're saying. Because now that he's in, he's landed his hooks, he's starting to work yeah. and the round's over. And it's like, what happens in the last round if that's five minutes? Is the fight over already? Exactly right. They are both absolutely exhausted. What a fight though, another cracker on XFC 47. Such experienced coaches and trainers at their gyms. These guys coming out with pure passion and heart. Look at the throws. Every time they threw, Natar just wanted to dive in, get that takedown to stop him throwing. I tell you what, Paras should hold his hands up high whether he wins or loses. Is the heart he showed after blowing out all of his energy trying to get the finish in the last round was incredible. Okay, three fights, three amazing, three amazing fights so far. The heart from Paras, though, like that naked choke was tight. That was very tight. That was In a split from the decision, the winner of this fight in the red corner, Kevin El Toro Salzero Paras. And that's where the 10-8 rounds will come in handy. Paras clearly did enough in the first yeah. round with the striking and, and, and the second round as well, got out of it, landed some damage. It, yeah, it's a lot of the second split decision. The Boonchu guys are not happy about it over on the side though. I mean, of course we were split once again. Yeah, yeah. We thought Natar had had it, we thought, uh, who, who knows really, that's why we're not judges, but you can see how hard the, the judges role is here. But and it's that thing, is like, uh, for us, was so close to finishing it with strikes, and then Natad was so close to finishing it with submissions. Which one do you give more credit to? Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, all I know Kevin, before is you it's go. a pleasure to watch these guys compete. Before Absolutely. you go, Kevin, is there somebody in the crowd that you'd like to acknowledge? Simone, my co is watching me. I want to thank Rocky. My kickboxing coach, especially Renato, my MMA coach. And uh, I love this man in a short time, he teach me everything. He taught me everything in a very short time. This man here taught you everything. Renato, Renato. There were, on more than one occasion in that fight, you found yourself in a devastating position on the mat. What does it take to get back to your feet? It was very hard, but I listened to coach Renato. He said to me to keep going. I put on my heart and uh, I won. And a terrific performer you are, congratulations. Thank you very much. Make some noise, Kevin Piras.